right, let's see. Let's get to our live questions here. And it looks like uh, Wei has the first question. And let's make that a little bigger. So gonna, there we go. Okay, Wei says, covered call question. How can you demonstrate with the tools how one would decide on rolling out or allowing your stocks to be assigned? An excellent question. So first things first, let's say that I normally weigh what we would do here in this scenario. Here we go. Is naturally we'd use the covered call screens, either the option chain if we know a stock or preferably use the search to find a position that matches our criteria. Whether I wanna use the default criteria on power options for a monthly covered call, weekly covered call, or David's question we'll get to if you wanted to use the simulated CD screen later down the line. Here's one we just created using our fundamentals uh, from the March 10th for that uh, presentation way that I had mentioned before. Now, once I pick a trade, I'm gonna enter it into the portfolio. And I think I'm gonna use one of mine that got away from me. And uh, let's just go to the portfolio. Let's see here. And I'm gonna create a new portfolio for today's presentation. Let's see, do we have a recent one? No, that's perfectly fine. So let's call it new positions for March 12th. And I'll just put in an arbitrary amount of number, let's say $25,000, copy that over, and we're gonna create this on March 2nd. Okay. All right, so let's go to the portfolios. That's the setup. Now I wanna go into portfolios to put in a position. And we're gonna use a covered call naturally for Wei's question. So we'll select covered call here to enter my linked position. We're gonna use DAR. It's one of the married puts that I'm in. We're gonna put that on March 2nd, we bought 100 shares around 68.38. And at the same time, we are gonna sell a March 70 call for 260. And that would have been on March 2nd. Now, I know these are kind of accurate numbers because this is about the time when I adjusted my married put by selling the March 70 call at 260, 265, I think it was way uh, in that case. But we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Now, initially, this was going to be a high potential return. It really was extremely high, not only because of the $1.62 gain from the 68.38 to the 70 strike, but this highly inflated premium due to earnings were coming up after the close on March 2nd. Naturally, we see the stock has had a huge run. It actually dipped the first day. We might have been able to buy this call back on March 3rd um, for about, I think, $1.80. Would have made 80 cents on it. And then after that, the stock just went up three days in a row, pulled back a little bit the other day back to 74. Yesterday went back up and today gained another 50 cents. Here we are at 78.74, one week to expiration. Buyback cost is essentially intrinsic value at 8.85. Now, that's three times roughly what I originally collected for the premium. If I liquidated right now, bought to close the call at near intrinsic value and sold to close the stock, I'd be at that 6.2% return for 10 days. Okay. An earnings play the work code. Normally, I would never do a covered call in earnings. I'll describe that in a moment. And of course, if I just leave it alone for the next seven days, we'll get that extra 0.2% to see the max return of 6.4% when we get assigned at 70. Now, naturally, way what I would have done is in the alert section, I would have set alerts, you know, to remind me, hey, if the stock is trading above, we sold the 70 call for two dollars. Let's say if it's above 72.50. I might consider rolling the position, or if it dropped down below $64, I might consider rolling down for more safety. Uh, if I made a certain amount on the ask time value, if that drops to less than, uh, let's say, 1%, and I think we're there, if I'm not mistaken, I might set that as well. Or the total position change, or if the stock has a moves below its 50-day moving average, 20-day moving average, or so forth. All right, but let's just do that and save the alerts here. Okay, so naturally, my alert's been triggered. See it here in red. We're above 7250. 
Now, this initial position is an extreme example, <clears throat> but let's now talk directly to your question about how would one decide on rolling out or allowing the stocks to be assigned. As I'm tracking a position, whether it's a covered call, naked put, collar, bull put credit spread, married put, of course, as the trigger is hit or the stock exceeded my expectations or dropped against my expectations, we use the more information button, go to position actions and position analysis. This gives me a breakdown of my current position. Yeah, that time value is less than 1%, so that trigger was also hit as well, in addition to our stock being above 7250. Down below, we see what we saw a little bit in the portfolio. It's just spelled out a little bit better for us. And what I mean by that is we're able to see here the full details if we chose to for our liquidation value. If we close the position right now, if I click details, I'll be able to see the full math on the position. And of course, compared to our future expiration value. Now, why is this view important? Before we talk about the rolling way, why is this view important? Because in a different example, let's say that right now I could liquidate for only a 3.3% return, which definitely would match my targets for 10 days. But let's say this was a 30-day trade and we're 20 days in. I can liquidate right now for 3.3 or roughly, you know, about 48% of the expected max profit of 6.4. That would kind of dictate I'm not liquidating necessarily right now unless 3.3% met your goals for the trading plan for your covered call position. I'd rather leave it open for 10 or 15 days and get closer to the full amount of 6.4%. But in this scenario, stock exceeded our expectations. We think there's more upside possible way. So are we going to roll out this position? And is it a good idea to roll out this position? Let's scroll down now below that view and we see the potential rollout opportunities for our position. And I had mentioned a moment ago about a trading plan. When you set out to do covered calls way, you have a target for your positions. Whether you're planning on holding the positions long-term or whether you're targeting, let's say 2% every 15 or 20 days, or maybe you're targeting more of a three, three and a half percent, for 30 days. That is an important distinction, right? Three and a half percent return, okay, for 30 days. That's an important distinction in either case because you want to make sure now where you're rolling to meets your targets. We know that if we do nothing on this example position way, we'll be looking at a return of 6.4% in the next. Well, technically five days now. Let's just call it five days because we won't be able to do anything on it till Monday anyway. So in five days, we're going to make 6.4%. We saw that it's going to cost me 885 to buy to close that call. And if I go out to, let's say, the April 70 strike, still in the money, I could roll for a credit because I'd be getting 1020. And my return goes up to 8.6% if we're assigned. But that's a 2.2% increase in profit because of the high buyback cost for what? An additional 30 days of time. Does that match my target? If my target was 3% for 30 days, I'm not rolling to this 70 strike, obviously, in this case. I'm going to wait and likely not roll or select another strike. I'll take assignment for the 6.4% and then maybe look for a new position for April, 30 days out, that's offering me that 3 or 3.5% 3 using the Power Options search tool. If it doesn't meet my trading plan, I'm not rolling for the sake of rolling. Okay. Others do, though. The next one, going up just one strike. We end up rolling for a debit. We're going to buy it back for 885. We're only going to collect 670. So we've got essentially a 215 debit. But remember, we took in 260 initially. So we still have a 45 cent positive premium. 
between the initial call that was sold, our buyback cost, and the new premium. Many investors like to roll straight for a credit. Sometimes that's not necessary if it meets your goals. We're at 6.4% return. Moving up to the April 75, which is still slightly in the money right now, would give us a 4% return, up to 10.4% return if assigned for 30 days of additional premium or time. This matches my trading goals. This might be a good idea for me to roll to at this time. Of course, many of us may want to stay out of the money to get for the higher return. And here in our rollouts, we're only seeing the April going up to the just out of the money April 80. We're only going to get $4. So the original 260 credit, 885 debit we paid, and then collecting $4 in premium puts us at a debit at 225, meaning we're going to add to our cost basis. But we go up 7.1% as a potential return if the stock's above 80 at April expiration. We've again achieved our goals. We've moved up from 6.4 to 13.3. I'm sorry, 6.9. My apologies. That's a 6.9% return for the next 30 days if the stock's above 80. This is why I say it's okay to roll for a debit because I've more than met my initial goals. In fact, I've doubled it. And if my sentiment is that DAR is going to continue this run for the next 30 days and be trading at 82 or 83, I get another 6.9% for 30 days. That matches my targets for this position and for the covered call strategy in my portfolio. I would do it. When would I not choose to roll to either the April 75 in this case or the April 80? Yes, I know. The comment came in and said, well, what would you do about weeklies? Well, DAR in our example is just monthlies. and We're going to have to take another look at that very quickly because there's something else that's missing here that I'm about to get to other than the weekly options, which are missing because this stock does not offer weekly options. Our return again is 6.4%. That we know. If rolling up to the April 75 call, remember we got this nice premium because of earnings. If the volatility dropped on the stock, and here I am with this 885 buyback, and this 75 call was only at $4 of premium. We're 374 in the money. It's only, okay, so maybe it'd be, let's call it $5. It's not as high of a return anymore because the volatility collapsed. If this gain, again, as we saw before, was only up to 2%, my target for 30 days was three, three and a half percent, I wouldn't do it. Same here. If this potential return to that out of the money call with the lower probability of 45% of being assigned only went up from 6.4 to say uh, 8.5 because of lower volatility and lower premium, I wouldn't do it. I would take assignment, then use the search tool to find a new position that matched my stock and my return requirement for the next 30 days or 40 days on the position. So that's sort of a discussion that we've had before about rolling in the money covered calls. Uh, we'll go take a look at that in just a moment as well. But I wanna go back to the main position. There's another factor I would cons concern myself as a bad term. I would consider in this particular example, and it was commented on here. Let's go to the option chain for DAR. You see, we have Marches, we have Aprils, and then there's a July series. I might be able to roll for a credit, potentially maybe going up from R70 strike at 885 to maybe a May 75. That might be at 880 or $9. But that series has not been released yet. It won't be released until after March expiration next week, the following Monday. So if I'm still planning on staying in this position way, and I want other options, for lack of a better term, I may simply buy to close this call now, or maybe sometime next week, even if it goes up a little bit more. If my plan was to roll it, then wait till after March expiration See when the Mays come out the following Monday, if that makes sense. Okay, that's what I would look for to do long term in those positions. 
That's my decision-making process for rolling an in-the-money covered call. Still has to match my target goals on the position for the strategy in my portfolio, my trading plan. In addition to that, a comment that was uh, brought in, I'm sorry, it wasn't brought in. It was I was reading it differently. But a comment I was expecting to see is the one thing I have to do now, if I'm considering rolling up this position, even if those rollout opportunities I evaluated on power options match my trading plan to move up to the position, I'm going to go back through and do my research and analysis again on the entire position as if it was brand new. Why? Because if I'm rolling up to a 75 call, oh, sorry, that's not going to work. If I'm rolling up to a 75 call or an 80 call, and I'm doing it at a debit, even though the new return is matching my trading plan and increasing, my expectation better be that the next 30 days, the stock's still going to be in this trading range. If I feel now that the stock's going to pull back, and the next couple of weeks might pull back to 70 or 68 or something along those lines, or the market as a whole, I'm concerned about way and I feel it's going to pull back. You're a little bit bearish in the next few weeks that the steam is running out of the market. Take assignment, get the return, liquidate now and get 97% of the return you expected. Don't roll and increase your cost basis into the position if you're concerned about a pullback because you might end up taking a loss on something that's roughly a good return that matched your trading plan right now. Okay. So those are my thoughts on this approach of rolling an in-the-money covered call, when to do it, when not to do it, follow your decision-making process, follow your trading plan, and reevaluate the stock as well to make sure you're comfortable going to the new strike and that you feel confident the stock's going to be trading near that new strike you're going to and more. Now, in addition to that, let's just go to the YouTube channel. And we've had several discussions, so you can go to our YouTube channel on Power Options. And then you go into the search field here. And I'm just going to go ITM covered calls. Try to keep as many of the same um, content words as possible for easier to find. So here's some recent presentations from two months ago. Rolling a deep in the, mother, uh, a deep in the money covered call at expiration. When to roll an in the money covered calls. Well, it's a different discussion with different examples. Uh, 15 minutes here, nine minutes here. Here's some other discussions on rolling deep in the money covered calls from nine months ago. Three different scenarios, uh, cut in the money covered call in Boeing and a couple of others as well. And then here's one from a couple weeks ago, liquidity. You don't have to watch all of those, but for other examples way, check out the YouTube channel, search for ITM covered calls. You've got one from two months ago and one from here and when to roll in the money cover call. More examples, more discussion for you right there. But of course, we'll get this presentation posted for you as well as soon as that is available.